All right, so I have finished with all the kind of aspects of the poster. I like all three elements that I ask you to have in your poster. Um, I like the background that I've customized. I like the type that I've customized and colored based on a, a found typeface that then I, I altered a lot um, and placed specifically to go with the shape of my spot illustration. And I, I liked those other things so much that I went back and improved my spot illustration to kind of bring it up to that, to that level and that texture and that uh, visual interest. So now I just want to make sure it all goes together well and that I can use these digital tools well to, to get the best portfolio piece at the end. And remember, nothing is final in digital art. You have options. So it's always good to kind of take breaks from it and then come back. But as I look at it now, I'm thinking, what if the uh, illustration, now that I like a lot, right? Whereas before it was kind of overshadowed by the type. I'll, I'll try to show you that. Because without all the texturing, the type was a little bit more visually interesting to me than the illustration. So what we're talking about here is what I call a level of finish to your work. You want all aspects of it to be at the same level of finish. So one thing doesn't stand out to you in a finished portfolio project as needing more attention than another area, right? Even if it's just the background. So I like the level of finish of my spot illustration now. I like it so much, maybe I want that spot illustration to have a little bit more space on the poster. So what can I do? Well, I can duplicate it. You know, Command J or right click, say duplicate layer. And I saved it before this because now we're using a lot of memory to work at full print resolution at nine by 12 inches. And I can hit Control T. And I can enlarge it and see if that can work. So even though I designed the type to go with this size of the illustration, now with the blood, I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe I can squeeze it in there and make it a little bit more prominent. And just place it. Come on, computer work with me. And because I made a duplicate, then I have the two to compare. Come on, you just got to move with me. <laughs> so this, this leg is when, you know, you're asking a lot of photo P here. So I just have to be kind of slow and deliberate and patient. And I can use my, my arrow keys to nudge it into place. And first I'm going to think, okay, if I'm just putting the spot illustration on the poster, on just the background, what's the best placement for it? at this size now. Think maybe about there. So I'm going to hit return. And now I'm going to make a duplicate of my final type. And I'm going to hold down shift on all of the different final type things and hit Command J, and it will duplicate all of them in time. <laughs> there we go. So I go from where I have the copy of the final type, 
I move this up, I'm going to go ahead and merge those layers together. So I have all the assets here underneath. So now all that's on one, one layer. And I'm just going to move that up a little bit. And so this is another variation I have that I can use. And then, of course, I can change my poster size if I want. By checking everything, I'm also noticing, oh, look at the border. There's a little overlap. And that's coming from this layer. Or what layer is that coming from? i got to find it. So what can I do to fix that? Well, I can put a blank white on top of it. So you want to check all of your edges when you're finishing. So I'm going to duplicate from my blank white layer and then move that layer up above so it blocks it out. But then, because I've done that, I could also play with changing my format a little bit. So what if the blood doesn't have a lot of space on the bottom? I can weight the bottom of my border a little bit more. There we go. And then I can use my guides And I can decide where I want it to crop. For my print ready, you no know, final poster. Okay, so bringing a level of finish to everything means that everything is as considered as everything else. You bring everything up to the same level. And I'm looking at the color holds. I'm looking at the lettering. I'm looking at the texturing. I'm zooming in at 100%. You can see that in the bottom uh, left corner of the window in PhotoP, because this is a good way to, to check for how it's going to print. And ideally, you're understanding how you got all of these features, right? How I got the textures and the various elements, how I got the colors, how I made the highlights happen, why the blood has a stronger half, uh, half tone pattern than anything else. And then, once you're happy with it, you save it as your final PSD. And then we're going to save it as a JPEG to put into Canvas. So the advantage of digital art is we have full control of all of And so we, we kind of think critically as we do it and decide what's best. And then we keep the PSD file because we might change our mind later on. Just for instance, I might decide that this whole column of type where it says good just needs to be moved back a little bit. And I know how to do that because I've organized my layers. And if PhotoP can catch up with me, <laughs> I can do it.
Yeah. So this was pointed out in class today, a new discovery. Um, if you use the move tool and you click on distances, this is something that we haven't found in Photoshop. It will show you kind of the layout differences, how the P is closer to that edge and the G is to that edge, that kind of thing. What the center line is, and the center line is running nicely through my illustration. I like that. But ultimately, it's all if it works visually for you, then you've done a, a fine job, right? And it matters the rectangle that you're composing on, right? If this was for an Instagram post that's a square, I would arrange these elements differently. Okay, so because I made that change, I want to save it again as a PSD, which is painful and waiting. But these are this is very much um, a project that is similar to what your final project will be, where you can use any digital process you want. You can draw, you can color, you can use vector elements, you can create those vector elements, or you can composite, or you can combine any of those things together. So this is the, uh, the most informed one we've done so far, right? Where we could bring all those elements together in a way that we controlled everything. The only thing I didn't ask you to do from scratch was design your own typeface. But of course, you can do that. You just treat each letter form as though it's its own line art illustration. And then I also didn't ask you to paint your own background, like we painted the sky for the cloud creature assignment, but you can definitely do that. So that's it for this project. Um, I'm going to post that JPEG to the canvas, and then I ask you guys to, to try to get your posters ready to submit next class. And then we're also doing our presentations next class. So lots to. Uh, to give your attention to. I'll see you guys next time.